Here is uh, another incredible Jubilee video where they are going to be platforming some uh, psychopathic anti-vaxxers, I guess. This is going to be a good one, boys. Strap, buckle up. I acknowledge that this is obviously a very sensitive topic, especially coming out of what's been an incredibly difficult year battling the coronavirus pandemic. But as vaccines are starting to roll out, this is also a very real and current conversation that we're seeing happen within our communities and all around the country. So our goal with this video was to just earnestly portray various perspectives that we were hearing and um, not necessarily that we condone these perspectives, but to understand why people are feeling the way they might be. Bro, why is he not doing, if you're going to do a fucking different perspectives coverage, you should absolutely be like, anti-vaxxers are crazy sorry i'm not going to play into the misinformation there is no both sides of this argument we're going to show you what the other side's arguments are but they're nuts and above all else we want to encourage you to see each other's humanity and uh, feel more empathy okay like why why is everyone in this video tested for COVID-19 prior to filming? If you're going to say that, then you should also literally admit that like, wait, hold on. There's got to be more info on vaccines, right? They have to literally not show the anti-vax position as like a, a, as a legitimate point of view. They have to say. Over the past year, I've been integrally involved in treating COVID-19 patients in the ICU as I'm a critical care physician. I'd never seen a disease like this in my 20 years of experience. This virus kills you slowly, methodically, and without mercy. I'm a registered nurse, and I think the COVID vaccine is very- I love that they're gonna put like doctors and people who have seen like the worst of the worst in regards to COVID against like Crystal Mommy uh, 69. Uh, hey, I'm Crystal Mommy 69. I haven't seen the video yet, but I assume the counter is gonna be like chiropractors and Crystal Mommy 69 being like, well, you're a doctor. Well, guess what? Doctors are responsible for my son having autism from the original vaccine that they got for whatever the f when they were a child. So who's to blame here, doctor? Very important because it prevents infection and not just for us and for, for our I families. did my research. We've all been at home for the better part of a year and we have to make some tough decisions about our health and how we're going to interact with each other in the future. Why am I skeptical? Well, there's oh. been a lot of misinformation. This COVID thing has been very political. I'm not- Bro, every anti-vaxxer is like a brand, okay? Like, I feel like at this stage, if you're like a right-wing reactionary and you don't have a brand around you being a right-wing reactionary, like, why do you even uh, promote your point of view? My dude is, is, this is a clout shark, okay? Through and fucking through. Sorry. Not uh, anti-vaccination. I'm just- more skeptical about the COVID vaccination. I feel like it's not safe yet. There hasn't been enough testing done on uh, this vaccine, and I don't think that it's a one-size-fits-all. I'm not for the COVID vaccine because the evidence doesn't add up to that being necessary in order to survive. There's only been one side of the story told, and it's been a side of death and uh, sadness and depression, and I don't believe that's the whole truth. Yeah, what about all the people that survived getting COVID is a fucking incredible uh, argument, dude. Hi, my name is Jacqueline. I'm a registered nurse for um, two years and I'm excited to be here and extremely nervous. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Thomas Yadigar. I'm a critical care physician and I supervise a team of 20 physicians. And on a normal day, we take care of about 120 patients in the hospital and about 40 to 50 patients in the ICU. Hi, my name is Kelly. I am a teacher. I've been teaching for 16 years and I'm just very excited to be here. Hi, my name is Siaka Masakwa and, you know, just a individual that loves this life and wants to just see the best for everybody in it, you know. Hello, my name is Percy. I'm an actor and podcaster, and I'm just grateful to be here. Hi, my name is Erica, and I am a stay-at-home mom. I have a four-year-old. I'm definitely not here to change anyone. Bro, they hit literally the target audiences. Like, they hit the crystal mom audience that, like, turned QAnon after fucking COVID. They hit the fucking grifter uh, guy who's like, yeah, I'm a podcaster trying to build my own brand, you know, hey, on the come up. And then the other guy who's like a um, spiritualist, uh, you know, I, I just, uh, I'm an individual who wants the best for people. Let's be real. The only person that they didn't have is the fucking white uh, Republican Karen from, you know, Minnesota, who's like, yeah, ah, it's actually, this is the same as Jim Crow laws. Like that's the only person that they didn't fucking add to the equation here. The first prompt 
is COVID-19 scares me. Please come forward if you agree with the statement. Oh, God. Yeah, so for me, I have asthma. I was born with it, which is why I keep myself isolated. I just don't want to put myself in a position where I oh, got to call my mom and God. say, hey, come to California. I'm in trouble. Yeah, for me, um, COVID with family members, uh, friends who have gotten sick, um, friends who have passed away. I'm just very concerned for my parents, my, my aunts, my cousins, everybody, yeah. so, including <laughs> myself. Right. Can we please have our disagreeers come and join us? I thought I was going to be the only one. <laughs> I guess I would say it doesn't scare me in the same manner as I've heard from you guys, because I had it. I, I got it back in January before it was cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm good now, right? My 74-year-old mom who came to visit. He said he got COVID before it was cool? Is that what he said? Had it. My six-year-old godson, my three-year-old godson, my 40-year-old best friend, 32-year-old uh, roommate. The kids went through like this. My mom, 11 days. It was weird for her, but she's healthy as hell. You know, and, and that's my own personal story. And then I have not changed my lifestyle since this thing started. If anything, I've gone out more. I've been going to rallies since June. I feel like conservatism is diagnosable as a, as a problem. Like, it's just, like, there's no other way to look at this than I've been going to rallies more frequently. And I've been around multiple people of all ages, consistently hugged, hung out with every Saturday for six, seven months, nothing. I grew up undocumented, so there's a lot of other things that I grew up fearing, um, cops being one of those. And COVID, you know, it got my grandmother, it got um, my aunt, my uncle. My aunt and uncle did pass away in Mexico. Um, it got a handful of my friends. Um, but to say that I'm afraid of it and to like change my life and stay home and then feed that to my four-year-old, that's not the way that I have chosen to live because I do agree that fear in itself can cause so much stress. It can lower your immune system, you know, and it can just put your mind in such a... Well, if people literally, I feel like they, they unironically think that, you know, if you just don't think about COVID, it just doesn't exist. You know what I mean? I can't see it, brother, so it must not exist. A state of that panic energy. and trauma that I feel like that in itself could be so much more detrimental in the long run. You should be aware. I don't think it's ever good to you know, to cause mass fear on, on, on the population. But I, I think, you know, knowledge is power. Yep. So you have to be able to understand what's- The doctor's like, I've seen people die in the ICU away from their friends and family. And on the other hand, you have a uh, crystal mommy who's like, well, actually using the power of positive affirmations, I've decided to completely eradicate the fear from COVID. If I don't see it, it does not exist. Like, oh, okay. Everyone should get a COVID-19 vaccine. Okay. Come forward if you disagree. Shot the moon. <laughs> oh. <That's a> shot. <laughs> I don't think everybody should get it because people who are allergic to vaccines. Yeah, I mean, that's a fucking idiotic question. Like, no, why are you guys throwing up question marks? Of course, not everyone should get vaccines. The people who are fucking legitimately allergic, the people who have like legitimate allergies and would die if they got this vaccine or some shit like that, those people should be the biggest pro-vaxxers, right? And the reason for that is they themselves can't get it, so they must make sure that everyone else gets it so that there's fucking herd immunity. There's herd immunity without them getting it because otherwise they are not protected. So we all have our own medical history. We all have our own medical experiences, how we reacted to vaccines. That being said, I don't think at this point we're gonna eradicate COVID-19 with a vaccine, but that doesn't mean that vaccine's not critically important and the people who should be getting it, they should get the vaccine. I myself did get the vaccine. Yeah, I agree. I don't think it's a one size fits all because again, everyone's body is so different that what might work for you might kill me and vice versa. And so for me, I feel like that's not a risk that I'm willing to take. I actually- I love that like, okay, so the argument always is, do you trust nature or modern medicine? Because you're rolling the dice technically on modern medicine as well, right? So people make the argument, they're like, well, um, actually, like if I take the vaccine, what if I have like long-term complications or whatever? Bitch, what if you have long-term complications or short-term complications in the form of death if you don't take the vaccine? 
and you get COVID. It's a dice roll either way. I am going to, unfortunately, roll the dice, maybe unfortunately for you, roll the dice on behalf of modern medicine, which has been very fucking good so far. Because you're literally saying like, oh, I'll just let COVID do its thing. Like, oh, okay. Actually developed allergies due to vaccines as a kid. And um, I would break out in hives. It would last, you know, anywhere between three days to like two weeks. And the doctors throughout like 20 years of my life could never figure it out. It definitely does something to you <laughs> mentally when you go into an ER and you're in this desperate need for help. And they would just kind of look at me and go like, okay, well, we'll just give you Benadryl and you can go home. It wasn't until I became an adult. I worked for several families as a babysitter and they all happened to be physicians. And um, some of them talked to me about vaccine injuries. It, it clicked, you know, because the second that I started making my own medical decisions, that's when all of the side effects just kind of went away. This is pretty bad, dude. Like, as far as, uh, as far as, like, dangerous propaganda goes, like, this video should come with, like, a multitude of disclaimers. Every time any of the fucking anti-vaxxers talk, like, there should be, like, three different fucking disclaimers underneath. Uh, I was babysitting some doctors, and I'm going to relay the information that they carefully gave me in an incredibly irresponsible manner. The one thing I would ask you, though, Erica, is because you have had family members that died. Yeah. So you would trust getting the disease versus the vaccine. The, the vaccine scares you. Oh, the doctors is the exact same thing I said. It's Not fucking much. like, oh, you, you're gonna roll the dice on nature, dude? What are you, crazy? Hey, nature, do your thing. Like, let's say if you had COVID, like I would feel so much more comfortable shaking your hand and getting COVID through you and build the antibodies for it. Then I would to trust the vaccine. It's not for yourself. It's for the people that you don't know, but you're going to come into contact with and you're going to help this virus spread. But isn't that under the assumption that the vaccination itself somehow stops you from getting COVID and that's not true? The vaccination, actually both the Pfizer and the Moderna are very successful at- oh, so 94%. Can you still get it? Yes. I have had patients that have had their series of vaccines and even two weeks later, they still get the virus. But even when you get it, it's not as severe. You don't need to get hospitalized. And again, if we can break the cycle where there's less people for this virus to spread, that's what we're looking for in the vaccination. So I guess with me on that, um, if we're talking about the uh, mortality rate is... is uh... Bro, so far, I think it's fucking... It's insane to, to look at a vaccine like that, recognize that in 100% of the instances, it has eliminated uh, mortality and eliminated like the most severe symptoms and still be like, well, this is 94%. Like, okay, all right, well, you're never going to be satisfied by any scientific achievement. It's just not going to happen. 0.3%, 0.03%, you know, for mm -hmm. who were dying, the survivor is 99.97. Mm -hmm. The death rate is higher yeah, than 0.3%. It's 1 to 2%, actually, the death rate. 1 to 2%? Rate. Mm -hmm. So the survivor much is 99.97. It's much higher than... not 99.97. Case fatality rates are about, in the in states, is about 1%. Well, yeah. I didn't think it was yeah, even a percentage point. What doesn't add up is to take that foreign entity that has so many other things that can affect my body in a negative way that I don't need to put in myself for what I'm looking at is the percentage of those that when they do get it, this is who may go. This motherfucker is a, is a vaccine skeptic. Even if it was 100%, he would still not be on board with it. That's the other part of this problem where he's like, oh, it's just 94%. You're insane, okay? You just don't want the vaccine because you're terrified because you're like, ooh, 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 me no want vaccine. Me believe nature. That's it. Time that can't even breathe on their own. The rest of their life, they have to be on oxygen. Sure, they didn't die, but now they can't walk up the stairs without feeling shortness of breath. How many is that? It's about it's still... 30, about 30%. And those are not even hospitalized patients. So even mm -hmm. people who had mild illness, mm -hmm. they developed long yeah. collars. 30%? Yeah, up to 30%. <laughs> I saw all the different age ranges in my house and nobody has anything after. Thanks. Oh my God. Oh, never mind, dude. It didn't impact you, so it's fine. I mean, there have been people that have fucking survived falling out of planes. So obviously, you should literally not use a parachute when you jump out of a plane, you know? Fuck it, dude. There's an anecdote for anything, brother. Oh, 500,000 people have died? Pfft, whatever, dude. I've seen people that have survived, so. People in different oh, ways. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, it's not to take away like, man, that, that's terrible. But what it can do adversely to me 
and to others, it's going to be impossible to approach. Like, how do you deny 525,000 people uh, who have died, right? While simultaneously saying, well, what about the vaccine that could kill people? Like, you're literally saying the vaccine has the potential to kill people with no evidence while simultaneously denying all of the evidence of people that have died so far of the fucking actual disease. It is mind boggling. All the things you guys are saying, I don't believe is false at all. You're, right. That's your experience. Right. But I also know it's like, I told you, I'm going out week in and week out, seeing those old people for six, seven months and we're laughing, partying, dancing together consistently. I can't just shut that off and go, well, the Times said this and then CNN said this and only the people in the front lines right when those are dying said this. So that means that's the only truth. I mean, you can hear the frustration. You know, it's just a lot of political nonsense going on. They're not telling us what the vaccine is made out of. You know, they're not telling us the side effects. We're hearing about it on Twitter. People, you know, sitting in bed, you know, can't get out because they got, a, you know, their body hurt. So for me, it's just like, what is the line about? What was the political agenda about? I d it makes you not trust. Yeah, no, I hear you. you know? I hear you. And I think um, what's you don't, always attracted don't me. Don't say you hear him. Don't. They're crazy, okay? I don't think you should be like, oh yeah, I totally understand your uh, your fears here. Like, don't. Don't even fucking validate the, the psychopathic fears that they have, okay? This is giving me vaccine side effect style chills. Watching a doctor who is like seeing so many people get fucking brutalized by this disease have to look at deniers and like take them seriously and and talk to them with empathy and compassion, okay? After literally describing what has happened to some of the patients, uh, it, it is insane. Can empathy make them turn? I don't know, I don't think it does, okay? Maybe it will, but uh, I feel like it doesn't. You have to make your decisions based on facts. Mm -hmm. Not fear, not speculation, yeah. not political agendas, but the truth of it was when this started in March, a lot of my friends started asking me because they said, oh, there's gonna be a vaccine, and I'm like, it's gonna be a vaccine, it's gonna take at least two years. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. The earliest that we had developed a vaccine before was four years. But then in the summertime, it actually went through phase one and phase two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it went into start of getting phase three. And the reason why it was actually able to get done within a year period is because one, they cut all the red tape because there's a lot yep. of bureaucracy. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then there was also a tremendous amount of collaboration yep. right. between countries. So I posted when I got my vaccine in December. And some of my friends called me and they're like, you said it wasn't gonna be available. And you said also, when it becomes available, you're gonna wait three to six months to get it. What what made you change your mind? I said, listen. Oh what the fuck do you want him to do? I'm sorry, but telling dumb people you're wrong is just not an effective way to convince people. They just ignore you. Doctor man is smart. Oh, really? Interesting. I'm sure that in the end of this process, maybe they'll show a different light. Maybe if you're lucky, but that's not how it fucking works. So at that point, you gotta do what is right and literally just push back. And doctor man is pushing back a lot. I would I, I would want him to push back even more, and I would want Jubilee to fucking literally put disclaimers under every psychopathic take that they have because you're not having this conversation with the other guy who you're going to change the minds of you're having this conversation with the millions of people who are going to watch the video you understand making them look as stupid as possible because they are really fucking stupid especially after the guy says oh well it's only 94 percent effective is probably the right thing to do because you're not actually fucking owning the other person or you're not changing the other person you're changing the minds of millions of people that might have been in the fucking middle of this conversation because they've seen a lot of like anti-vaxxer shit. I think one of the things that really hasn't been publicized is the quote unquote side effects. The vaccine, the Pfizer and the Moderna are two shots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the first shot is just to get your immune system kind of used to it. And the second shot is a booster. So the symptoms that you get, the headache, the body aches, the low grade fever, that's actually not a side effect. That's your immune system working and they go away. I understand that, you know, you had a horrible response and it was much more severe, but for the vast majority of people, we've already vaccinated over a hundred million people across the globe. So I think if there was anything more serious, it would have come out. Well, then there's, I mean, I'm sure everyone's seen videos and there are people who are mm -hmm. saying, I'm a nurse, I did this, not a side of their face is flat or they're shaking all day. When you see and you look up and you're online and that information, that stuff gets censored and taken off youtube taken off instagram taken off facebook like it, it then it, it what bro maybe the reason why that shit gets taken off is because dummies like you look at like false information and literally go oh well this corresponds to the fears that i personally have i'm not going to look further into it beyond the fact that i saw these videos and therefore it's fucking like that you are literally the reason why those videos get taken off because you are not adult enough to look at this and go well this is probably anecdotal or well this is probably misinformation 
or let me look into this a little bit further instead of looking at the fucking cool mom group that I'm a part of on Facebook and assuming that everything that they're presenting is real rather than the fucking medical experts. Raises that if you look at like Tuskegee experiment, they sat there and shot up a bunch of black men with tuberculosis or with um, syphilis. Or, or syphilis, sorry. Syphilis. They didn't say anything mm -hmm. and they've been doing this consistently. We can talk about like- Smallpox blankets. Right, and <laughs> it's like we've seen what they've done and then when you see people get censored for having a different opinion on this stuff over the last 10 months. I fucking hate how white supremacist America is because like he is right about that. It, I just, I hate it when people constantly fucking use that as an argument for the record. People constantly fucking use that as an argument as to like validate fears that people have instead of being like, no, this is different. This is different. This is different. This has been tested on not just like uh, black people or whatever. This is being distributed to every single fucking community. They're not literally, literally giving a different vaccine to black people. Like there is no they here, okay? Also this guy's a black Republican, which is ironic, but like, unless he literally thinks, yeah, he's conflating two things. The Tuskegee experiment is a controlled experiment targeted against black people. What is this hypothesis that we're all part of a new Tuskegee experiment? Exactly. Oh, I don't believe in vaccines because of the Tuskegee experiment. Okay, got it. Well, so what's the argument here? Do you think that like literally everyone is is getting fucking fake vaccines? Is that what's happening? It makes it that much harder that when they say take the vaccination, <laughs> I'll be damned to listen to them. I'm not saying you're a liar. I'm not saying you're a liar. I'm not saying you're a liar, but I'm like, you're also saying the same thing. The same people who I've seen show us get shot on TV like it's a, it's a sport. Right. Like what is that doing to the psyche of our country? It's still coming from these people yeah. or from a group that you go. You don't have confidence right. in them. <laughs> You know, and I think that's the biggest issue is the lack of transparency and mm -hmm. trust, right? I don't think they're doing it anymore, but remember they came out and it was like, oh, we'll pay people $1,500 yeah. to take the vaccine. But isn't this the same government that every time we need a stimulus check, they can't come up with a deal, <laughs> but you know, they're willing to pay for it. Again, it, it just looks fishy. It smells fishy. They're not telling us anything. Can I ask you a question? So let's well, say people, everybody got the vaccine. What happens? Do we just go back to work, go back to the gyms, go back to school. Like, unless the vaccine works 100%, if we all take it, I mean, what happens? Like, do we go back to normal? Do we still gotta wear the face mask, the social distance? Well, like, to continue to wear masks because there are people that aren't going to be vaccinated. Yeah. And there are people that are gonna to continue to spread COVID-19 because that's just what viruses do, they spread. And we're not going back to normal. We're gonna to go to some new variation. We're gonna have our own variant of normalcy. Yeah, yeah. And we're creating those things right now as we do the process and opening back up. I know that my district is planning to do soft open. You still have to be aware though that these kids, they don't have a vaccine. So, you know, my students are coming back into the classroom. Are they gonna be passing it to each other? Cause guess what? A lot of them I'm have sure. had COVID yeah. over this break. The COVID-19 restrictions have been necessary. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, I guess. Okay. Peer pressure, huh? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I think it has been necessary. When we look at how it's passed around, right? The gym. I love the gym. I used to live in the gym. And I know there's a chance that people don't wipe off after their equipment. People don't wash their hands in the bathroom. You know, so I think the restrictions have been necessary because if, if we didn't close down, Weird. people would still be at the beaches having a good old time. We needed some type of structure to make us do it because Kinda if weird, the government dude. just said, it's like... know, it up to you to stay home, people don't even do it now. And I mean, if we get another shutdown, why why are they it's like weirder when they have like when they make sense you know what i mean maybe it's just me but it's weirder to me when they fucking make sense it might be necessary who knows but i think for the time being it has helped to slow the spread of covid i think initially when we didn't know what was going on like hey i mean i was riding around with a with a mask on but then we started finding out and they didn't adjust that was my problem like my, my local restaurant, my buddy owns a shut down, but I get on a flight from here to Chicago with strangers I don't know, completely fine. That doesn't make sense to me. I think it's the basis of- But you're not. One is like supposed to be, okay. Dude, this shit is so dumb, dude. It's like him saying, oh, my buddy's restaurant was shut down, but if I go to a fucking undercover bar and like start kissing strangers, I might be okay. The reason why you can't shut off travel in its fucking entirety is because it's literally like, it's like shutting down grocery stores, okay? Without grocery chains, you're fucked. You're not gonna give people food. Look at the way the teacher's looking at her. Look at, look at the way the teacher's looking at him like, you really, are you serious? <laughs> 
Oh, I don't understand why they're not shutting down literal fucking travel. Well, maybe Absolutely. because they assume, perhaps falsely, that people are not going to be morons and literally fly around in the middle of a pandemic for dumb shit, like just going to Chicago to see the homies, okay? That's why. The issue I'm having is I'm not trying to label all non mass wearers as just criminals and they should be locked up. But I remember Bawa had a concert in Atlanta a couple weeks ago. Mm. And you see videos and pictures of people just, I mean, Wild it just out. smells hot. All those people in that club packed Deep together like sardines. Has Somebody has COVID, they either pass it along or they take it home. So. You see, like that, that whole thing, like, I, I just, I can't get aboard with that because it's all still based on fear. It's yeah. also based on like, well, because you said you saw the party, that means that some of you got sick. And I'm like, I'm sick. Get fucked, vegans. Seeing the people that bought in like 100% then come out and then something happens. And it's like, well, you were locked up. You weren't getting sun. You weren't doing things. You weren't interacting. Like, that blows my mind. That made us weaker. That's not the, that's no, not not the case with the yeah. lockdowns. No, no, no. Lockdowns have done worse in the cities and in the states than the ones that have less lockdowns. But then we had a third wave that was way worse. What? That's not even true. Why is he making this shit up? First of all, it's not even true within the United States borders, unless he's refusing to recognize like uh, percentages and he's only looking at totality. He's also completely false when, it, with respect to like America versus other countries which exist on the planet. It's very strange to me when people are just like, no, other countries don't exist. That's, like, that's fucking, have you heard of New Zealand, my friend? It is a country on this planet. Worse, here, because and, there here, wasn't a here. lockdown. The restaurants were open. I know because I wasn't there, but friends were invited. <laughs> inviting me to go let's go out and eat right. and then your third wave came and that's when the shutdown happened in november and so i don't agree with the lockdowns create more viruses they actually stop them because obviously we're not it, seeing it doesn't add up you saw the numbers drop in the hospitals as that shutdown happened right. and that's why we're back in this hole open up again yeah so i believe the lockdown was really necessary i think the first wave it was kind of controlled. We only had one medical surgical floor that had COVID. And then the third surge with Halloween, Christmas, New Year's, we had four floors that were all for COVID. So people- Looking at the COVID situation and saying it doesn't add up just shows that you're too stupid to recognize that it literally adds up. I think conversation is the most important way to solve a problem. We can be actually the virus, right? And yes. we can interject some healing for ourselves and for our, our students, our future, because we want to know what the perspectives are and how people are feeling. That helps to solve the problem. Yeah, I feel like you have to come from a genuine place where you want to know the truth. And that might make you feel uncomfortable. That might be different from what you were holding on to. But if you're gonna go into it already feeling like, well, I already know I'm right, and you know, I'm just gonna find more articles to support that mm -hmm. thought, then you're just right back at square one. Right, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I was hesitant too when I got off. She literally just described how she arrived at her position. That is some real fucking Republican level projection right there. Like, how did you arrive at your COVID skepticism? By doing exactly what you just described. And you know, for me, coming into this conversation, right? Is it I was skeptical oh of the vaccine, but I came into it to see what else can I learn? Because I think as people- And I'm still skeptical of the vaccine. <laughs> all we could do is sit back, take a deep breath and look slash, at each slash, other and say, how can we do lady? better? What can we learn? Get out of your box. Because if we don't, we are gonna be stuck yep. in this situation oh, for, forever. Oh, it's gonna be terrible, man. It's gonna be terrible. These, this is what's important. I'd rather talk to you. Dude, this shit is so dumb. Oh man, I'm so glad that we're communicating. It's like, okay, but did you change your fucking mind in the face of like actual information, like facts? No. So it's not good because the entire reason why we're doing this is so that you stop being the way you are. I think this reveals the uh, heart of the problem or rather what the interest truly is. For these people, they just want someone to listen to them talk about this dumbass shit and take them seriously. They don't want solutions. They're not actually looking for, uh, you know, a way to defeat this problem. They're just looking for someone to be like, yes, I hear you. I, I'm listening to you. I hear you. And you actually have some opinions. They might be even correct. I'm going to validate your point of view by simply, you know, fucking acknowledging its existence. Why is America like this? Because I don't know. I, I sound too much like a conservative when I say this, but I unironically believe that we have a snowflake problem where a lot of people have been duped into believing 
that their point of view is important and serious and should be heard, deserves recognition by virtue of a human being that is American coming up with it. I literally think that as a consequence of the individualist mentality that Americans have, every fucking uh, point of view should be taken seriously and conservatives literally operate this way all the goddamn time. It's super fucking stupid. Kyle Pred finally raided Burger Shot and found human remains inside. All right, this is just kind of disappointing i thought there was gonna be like was a, i love watching so earthquake videos they're so months. sick it's just no, dennis really dennis this is just all right. us all right. all right i'm here there Wait, is uh i don't think you i'm gonna need to go anywhere until you get questions yeah yeah let's um everybody why don't you guys just take a seat